Well, today is probably Wednesday, March 7th. Is it the 7th? Probably. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Friday's the 9th. I, there you go. <laughs> this is Still getting used to the new level one news format. We do it three times a week now. But it's totally a different day. That's why we're all wearing the same clothes. <laughs> we are... So this is your distinct intro. We have actually... Uh, let's just tell them. We actually stopped the recording. We refreshed. We got all the news stories ready. So this is not like seconds after the other one. We got the jokes put together. This is easily five minutes. I got I got my wiggles out. I ran up and down the hallway. She did. <laughs> And, there were a uh, lot of wiggles. We didn't get any footage of that, unfortunately. Don't ask. <laughs> so this episode will be uh, security, mostly about security, with some hardware and software, and a little bit of uh, copyright thrown in. And you've got the nonsense episode to look forward to. Now, if you want everything all at once, it is at, on Patreon, and we have a, had a huge increase in Patreon subscribers. You know, uh, yesterday, Tuesday's news video still has some uh, vitriol comments and things like that, but that's okay. Well, those people will, will, will come around. And this is also still a little bit of an experiment for the uh, Google Glay algorithm. Well, a lot of people accused us of doing this for the extra ad revenue. <laughs> that's not why we're doing it. We're doing it, let's just make that clear as well. We're doing it because Google controls who gets suggested videos. We want to grow the channel. We don't necessarily want to cash in we want other people to know that we exist and not have our subscriptions hidden from people. Put another and, way, we are sure that uh, there are other people like us that are not interested in the vapid nonsense that the algorithm would love to give you. And the only appeal, like distribution, no, don't care. Uh, ease of use and like goodness of the platform, nope, don't care. Literally, us, for us, the only thing that is cool about this platform is that we can reach new people that may be interested in the content. That is literally it. And for the for the viewer, we get that the convenience for them may be that they can get all of their content in one place. Also, we uh, some people have suggested we go to other platforms. We are we're gonna we're gonna try out DTube. Now we signed up for that. Haven't put anything on it yet, but maybe we'll start with this. <laughs> maybe we will have by the time you're watching this. Yeah. So if you hate YouTube <laughs> and you're just like, I will not bow down to the to the YouTube Maybe there's another option. Maybe, but we're not super impressed with it so far. We at under- least through the sign-up process. Yeah, we we understand that we're always going to be... How are we described? The Fringe Aspie yeah, channel? Fringe Aspies. We, we understand that we will always be that. We're not aspiring to be more than that. It is okay. But we are large in number and capability. There are a lot of Aspies out there, and we want to reach them. That's really what it boils down to. So, <laughs> And the algorithm shall not stop us. <laughs> well, I mean, it has. It so will far. hinder us. It will hinder us for sure. Well, we're working, as much as we also hinder ourselves. We're we're definitely working to delete that. We've got the the uh, Emhouse Dre exploit that works perfectly. So on with the news. Equifax Equifax has identified an additional 2.4 million customers hit by the data breach. Isn't this like my house flooded? Oh, I discovered the mudroom was flooded too. Oh, and it's like, well, yeah. I mean, it stands yeah. to reason. Uh, this would have been a big story before the the original Equifax leak. Can you but think no about, one no one cares now because Equifax yeah, done it like five really, times. We're so jaded to it now. So it's, they if it's one percent more than the other yeah. like so two hundred million people were affected. This is two point four million. Drop in the bucket. Drop in the bucket. If you were affected, they will reach out to you. But at this point, I mean, you probably should have already assumed that you know you should have already taken those steps. Now the circumstances. Like, if you were included in this leak, in this latest leak, the circumstances were really bizarre. Something about translating to German. Yeah. It's, who cares at this point? I mean, it's, uh, they're terrible. They made a horrible mistake and we're all going to pay for it. (laughs) And they're not. (laughs) They're not. They're just. Good analysis, Ryan. (laughs) Over to the weather. (laughs) It's going to (laughs) rain. It's it's also going to rain. I mean, you can't not be right. If we encompass the entire world as our audience. Switching gears a little bit to security news, uh, the most amazing thing happened. It's it, it's almost a record-setting uh, denial of service attack, but the difference here is, is it was fueled by Memcache. Memcache is a super popular caching daemon that's running on damn near everything, uh, but it runs on port 11211 by default. So you might want to scan your infrastructure and make sure that you don't have any internet-facing memcache servers listening because if you do they can be used for a reflection denial of service attack you shouldn't by default have internet facing memcached that's not how it works 
should just be localhost, but most people have it incorrectly configured. <laughs> the default config on a lot of distros is listen on zero, 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 zero. And uh, so this actually will multiply the effect. It's a reflection and amplification. And it, of course, you know, uh, what was the number? Let's go back up there. Uh, 1.3 terabit. 1.3 terabit. Oh. Uh, but it's a big B because yeah. uh, Akami has made a terrible mistake. That's probably a CSS class that makes that all someone, caps. But... Someone should sue them immediately. Actually? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, watch out for that because this is the biggest DDoS attack they have ever seen. And it's actually pretty simple to do because of the amplification. And it's so effective and simple, they suspect that people will switch over from things like Mirai. Maybe our security cams will be free now <laughs> because Memcached is going to be the hot new DDoS from now on. I wonder if this can be weaponized to mine some type of cryptocurrency because that's really going to be the deciding factor. Yeah, I think because the amplification, you know, you can't just send those requests and <laughs> maybe some genius can figure that out. Yeah, unlike your baby monitor, a memcache server is usually built for speed and bandwidth. So you get a lot more denial of service per packet on the memcache side of things versus just having a baby monitor flood the heating system in Montana. Real value for your dollar. <laughs> I mean, look at this graph. It's just, I mean, it's it ramps up really quickly and then just kind of tapers off. Now, you can't just block that port to mitigate it. So maybe it won't be as popular because of that. But in the meantime, you got to wonder how long before this type of news propagates out to all the people that might be affected by it. They'll well, get a little bit of mileage from it. A, a lot of ISPs will probably just block um, outbound port 11211. They've done that in the past with like spam bots and you know port 25 and that kind of thing but I don't know. We're going to talk about Fancy Bear again to, to remember Fancy Bear. Yeah the Germans have decided that their cyber attack uh, was done by Fancy Bears. Now this is really uh, the Fancy Bear aspect of this is not the most interesting thing. Apparently whoever it was had access to their stuff for over a year. I like that the BBC has the integrity to put by Russians in quotes. Yeah, I noticed that as well, and it made me think. <laughs> they are, of course, referring to the fact that the tools used for this can appear to come from any number of countries, not just Russia. But probably Russia, right? Because yeah. no one likes them. This was very double blind. This was various government offices, including Merkel's office. <laughs> now they've downplayed it and said that they didn't get anything super sensitive. But would they tell us if they did? Probably not. Is this is the insidiousness of this tool like when you're playing Secret Hitler and then the Secret Hitler literally tells you that they're Hitler? It's like, you know. The, literally the, Hitler? Yeah. Well, they're literally Hitler. The, they're literally Hitler in the context of Secret Hitler. I mean, that's the, oh, I should have said Hitler. Hey, we've lost our demonetization. <laughs> no. We've lost the demonetization? That's good though, right? Or no, wait. We've lost our monetization. Yeah. Right done. Anyway. Okay, this is not good. The feds can now probably unlock every iPhone model in existence. This is uh, Cellbrite, the Israeli company, the Israeli security company that actually does know its stuff, have updated their software tools, and every iPhone up to the iPhone 10 can be unlocked. The latest version. I don't think the probably is part of it anymore because they updated the story, and Cellbrite actually got back to them. And you would kind of expect them to be like, we don't comment on that kind of thing. They're like, yeah, we can. <laughs> look at, our, look yeah. at our packages. You want to unlock some iPhones? <laughs> Go ahead, talk to us, man. We're here for you. All that free advertising. Yeah. yeah. So this is the company that the FBI has used to, of course, while the FBI is like prodding us and be like, we must have encryption backdoors. We must have it. You can't hide your stuff. We need it. It's a matter of national security. Well, they can get to most of them. And now I guess they can get to all of them. Yeah. But the disgusting thing here is we, the taxpayers, are paying huge sums of money to license these softwares so that they can do this. I think they do it on a one-off case, right? Like you don't just get a software suite. They do it. In a callback to yesterday, we've heard that the Montclair police have been paying upwards of $15,000 an iPhone in order to uh, do a fine of $100 for somebody playing with their to phone determine. as they cross the crosswalk. That wouldn't shock me. <laughs> Listen, I know that there's all kinds of drugs and like murders happening around the city, but this is where the money really needs it's to go. It's a moral victory. But Sir, you've reached a high score in Bejeweled at the time of the accident. We know. We know for sure. We know because we spent ten grand unlocking the phone. Yeah, that's that's happening. Hand over that hundred dollars. <laughs> I guarantee that's happening somewhere in America. Maybe not Montclair <laughs> or Montclair. But yeah, if you're doing criminal stuff with your iPhone. What is wrong with you? You need to get a burner phone, a flip phone. 
uh, in other news of people using technology incorrectly, I, the U.S. Marines have uh, had an email leak of 21,000 soldiers and civilians. So that kind of, seems like kind of a lot. And it's just like, how how are these records treated so cavalier that they could even be emailed in the first place? Yeah, it was. This is not a hack. This is not... This is know, just plain old incompetence. There's no phishing. There's no <laughs> malware. It's just somebody emailed a file. And they said, oops. They said... We when after they found out about it, it's like we initiated the protocol to minimize how many people would receive that email. I was like, "Well, would you unsend it? <laughs> I don't think it works that way, bro." <laughs> hey, that email I just sent. Don't look at it. <laughs> Good news: the Library of Congress archi- archives everything, so they'll have a copy. It'll be fine. I was like, "Wait, yeah. isn't that? I wonder if you can get to it from a FOIA information uh, well, request." China's ha- Fancy Bear's got it. China's got it. Fancy the NSA's bears. got it. Mama's Fancy Bear. <laughs> Fancy Bear would be a great band name. Do you have a YubiKey? Do you also like to use Chrome? I've got some bad news for you. There's a, an attack has been demonstrated. Uh, Chrome has this feature that's like web to USB, which lets you share your USB devices or lets web pages connect to your USB devices. And so one of the features of this YubiKey is that you can it, it has an anti-phishing component. But if Chrome can get to your USB peripherals, and can do the challenge response handshake thing with the YubiKey, then it is possible for a malicious phishing site to uh, successfully impersonate a legit site because it can connect directly to your YubiKey. This is, so they added that presumably for things like VR headsets to work with websites, I guess. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's such a such a small niche or the uh um the leap you remember the leap where you could like you could do the hand motion thing with usb it was added to support devices like that too so you could do motion tracking again almost no one using it (laughs) but this is another one of those like yeah they could do it but this is a real complicated fish yeah a super complicated fish so you're probably not in trouble also this uh who was that what what website was that that was Wired. wired wired they exposed in the story they admitted is like now we've done promotions with yubikey before so they were very like this isn't that bad but they did say that the newest version of the yubikey is not effective it's a very specific version so yeah. i don't know if it was the newest version or like wired's version because wired bought the basic yubikey which doesn't have the anti-phishing stuff or something and so then Maybe, therefore yeah. it's- they did a giveaway anyway that's probably going to be fixed and it's not too worrying but you do have to think about like these these devices they sell you that's like, this is all you're ever going to need for security. No. And I'm sure that some people in the uh, comments will only need the slightest of encouragement to tell us about the open source alternatives to YubiKey because I think YubiKey has closed some of their stuff because historically they used to be more open source than they are today. Even though I, I think that YubiKey is a, a pretty good product when I used it a long time ago, but that was the open source product. So I don't know. Engagement. The Galaxy S9 and S9 Plus, we reported last week that uh, there, were, there had been a leak and it was literally just the day before the announcement. So really not much of a leak there. Might have just been the marketing team. Good job, marketing a team. <laughs> Nicely done. Samsung is turning it around. Uh, gone are the days when they pay for you know a million views from bots. And so uh, the things are taking a turn, though. Uh, depending on where you are in the world, your Galaxy S9 or your S9 Plus is going to get a different processor. And the benchmark results are kind of awkward. Adentech has got the scoop. Not much reason to get this over the uh, the last year's model because it did not perform well. Now, they were at a uh, some sort of uh, marketing event or something or a trade show or something. So they were doing all their benchmarks sort of like, you know, under the gun right there at the table or whatever. And they think that maybe what's going into production might not be the demo one that they had. Hopefully not because it did not perform well. Yeah. It, uh, there was also a theory that surfaced that maybe the European ver- – because one of the one version of the phone is going to use the uh, – I'm not sure how you pronounce this. The Exynos. Exynos processor. And the other one is like the Snapdragon. And the performance between those two processors is not identical. And so one of the processors is going to have to be gimped a little bit if both phones are to perform exactly the same. Either way, not very much of a motivation to get the S9, is it? <laughs> Unless your old phone has hit the 18-month mark and the battery is just crapping out all over the place. It's like, oh, I've got 50% left. Oh, it just turned off. Wendell, is that yours right now? Yeah. Are you, are you looking to get oh, a yeah. new one? I don't know. Maybe. I, all the cell phone landscape is just... 
I don't think everyone it... recommend what you think Wendell should get in the comments. <laughs> Engagement. <laughs> so sorry, because now it's just going to be flooded with cell phone recommendations. My battery, I don't think it's the battery itself. But something, they did an update, and then the next day it was like, you get one day of battery life. And I. <laughs> It's like you have enough power that we can just leave your microphone on all the time. Oh, yeah. yeah. We'll take a picture every 10 minutes. <laughs> hey, do you want to tag this restaurant you're nearby? <laughs> in, in other news, the death of the PC industry is at hand. Desktop PC shipments have dipped below $100 million a year. And there's worse to come between now and 2022 for all client devices. You know, I don't know. The register article, it's, you know, I've been, it's, we've been seeing this forever. And actually numbers were kind of up in some respects yeah. in the DIY well, market. I think in 2016, we were like flat, except Dell had a really good year. Remember yeah. that? Yeah. But now it's over across the board. We're down 2.7%. I blame, blame cryptocurrency miners. Because who can buy RAM? That. And Like yeah. I'm getting to that point where it's like, mm, maybe it's time to build a new machine. No, not at these <laughs> prices. I'm not, I mean, without a new a video card it's probably pointless yeah so it could be yeah i don't i don't there's the diy market is is definitely things have shifted but i don't know that things are quite as dire in the in the diy market so it's going to be interesting to see how this shakes out it's going to be interesting to see if the new generation of nvidia graphics cards are launched or delayed we had some stories about that but we decided to cut it because literally nothing is confirmed about the 2000 series nvidia graphics cards same with Ryzen Plus. There have been a lot of leaks. Zen 2, 2000 series, clock speeds, all that kind of stuff. It's all unsubstantiated conjecture, so we got no idea. We literally don't know, as I like to say. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Amazon uh, says, I don't know, to selling Nest. Oh, oh they know. <laughs> yeah, they know. They're definitely not doing it. They're not selling Google products. It's like, I don't know, Google, I'm not going to sell these. <laughs> yeah, now they have up until now, they've sold Nest products, but they have decided now they will not. It's funny because uh, they reached out to Nest in this article and Nest was like, no, the, the Amazon, got, they're real nice to us. And they're like, your, your products get good reviews and we sell a lot of them. We like them, but this came from the top. <laughs> oh wow! The dread pirate Bezos has de decreed it <laughs> that it shall not pass. Of course, this is the ongoing uh, war. Let's look at that guy. He is so evil. And he doesn't care that you know. They have been going back and forth because they have all these competing products, and they have the ability to turn each other's stuff off, and so yeah. they do. Now, if you would like a Chinese knockoff Chromecast or a Chinese knockoff Nest, that will be absolutely no problem. You can definitely buy that on Amazon. No problem. No questions asked. Don't worry. They might listen just a little bit. <laughs> it's funny, though, because uh, I bought something on Amazon and I didn't know it was counterfeit. And I thought it was a hor like the biggest pile of crap ever. And somebody else had one that was like a, le a legit one and it was not counterfeit and it was problem free and i, I want to say it was like the wireless receiver because remember we were doing some gaming and we got into like the uh the xbox controllers and i think i had a wireless controller and you could get a receiver for the computer that'll that'll run with wireless and i got it on amazon and it did not work at all it was flaky and it would drop out that is uh that was another set of stories that we didn't include this week i saw some headlines about that where people are really crying out and saying that Amazon has to do something about all the counterfeits. Oh, well, this was years ago for me, but well, apparently it's only getting worse. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Amazon is a big marketplace for them. So that's <laughs> something we'll, we'll probably hear more about. Yeah. Amazon. Woo. Chrome OS could be getting containers for running Linux VMs. This is a ZDNet article and there's, there's not a lot of information here, but I think this would make sense. I think Google is going to want to take advantage of the Linux ecosystem but also not have to share the cool stuff that they're developing. Yeah, they've got a couple of solutions where you can run Linux on the Chrome, or you can they even have one that you can run it in a web browser. But you got to turn on the developer mode and sacrifice some security, and they don't really like that. So I think this is their way of not having people get around their security by letting them do what they want to do. It looks like it's a little bit more protected than the crouton mode, but I was I was given to understand that one of the things with crouton is that the uh, Android part of the file system remains encrypted, but I haven't done that. So They also ripped off, it's like Crotonus or something like that, this thing's called, <laughs> so clearly they know their audience and they know what they're going for here. <laughs> 
Uh, Apple has also confirmed, he, you know, if you use iCloud, your stuff is stored with Google. So uh, <laughs> Apple is, and th- this honestly, this makes sense. The, the the you remember Web Objects, the Java thing from like Next when like Steve Jobs is still alive. Next, yeah, Apple still uses that for the Web Store. Web objects. So yeah, this makes perfect sense because Apple cannot do infrastructure. Now they have not confirmed if this is everything or maybe it's just your images and stuff like that. Does but it matter? A yeah. lot. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that Apple had to turn to Google for a cloud solution is very embarrassing. A sad day for Apple. How embarrassing. <laughs> Well, Apple doesn't even make servers anymore. So, I mean, they just mostly use yeah. Linux. And who can afford them? It's got to be. It's funny that the uh, uh, like I'm thinking about like search because remember, I mean, think about all the spats that Google and Apple have had over the years. It's like the Maps app and search, and uh, like the whole, like the auto Wi-Fi thing where it like finds the strongest Wi-Fi. Where Google was doing some cool stuff with that, and, like the sensor technology stuff. And self-driving cars, because Apple was like, we're going to do self-driving cars. And they were like, well, well, maybe we'll just work with auto manufacturers. And um, yeah. In that voice. Yeah. So uh, Google and Apple have been frenemies for a long time. This is sort of interesting. Well, now they've got it. uh, Amazon, maybe it's like they're going to join forces against Amazon. (laughs) How would that work? Like, what, what, what would be the... Is that like a Justice League of Evil versus like... Some other evil leagues, like two competing <laughs> well, evil leagues. With all the the shifting alliances and the drama, I think it's more like a women's dorm. I, I was thinking, <laughs> I was thinking like teenage girls. So like, yeah. Apple borrowed Google's dress for prom, <laughs> but didn't tell anybody that it was actually Google's dress. And and then she got crowned prom queen, and then a bunch of drama happened. Also, <laughs> somebody said, and we're not sure, but Google in a text message. Called Amazon a slut to Apple, oh. and uh, apparently they like the same guy, so it's it's a mess. Is this going to be a new T-shirt design? Are we going to do a T-shirt that's like you know the personification? <laughs> yeah, I mean this is I like the it for some reason it's reminding me of like where uh, like Tony Stark and Batman are throwing money at each other, and Spider Man's like just picking, just picking up money off the ground. But except there is no Spider Man in this equation; yeah. they're all they all have insanely money. rich. You know, Jeff Bezos was driving that, uh, you know, like that combat robot thing that you could pilot. He was he was driving that this week, too. And it's like he is really completing the Lex Luthor transition, yeah. like his character transition, his character arc. We can't talk about that yet. This is not the <laughs> robot episode. Stay tuned. <laughs> That's coming on Friday. If you have to have it now, uh, you can join Patreon and it, it'll be really good. This is a follow-up, kind of, but there's kind of some new information. Torrent Freak has... This thing, it says the MPAA wants filmmakers to pay licenses, not rip Blu-rays. Now, there's an exception in the law that allows documentary filmmakers to use clips from other people's films as part of their documentaries. But, of course, with Blu-ray, the Blu-ray encryption theoretically perfectly defeats that so that your only way to capture these clips would be to point a camera at a screen and capture your stuff that way. And, of course, documentary filmmakers want to be able to sample the original high-res, high-fidelity video from Blu-rays and the uh, MPAA... The Motion Picture Association ain't having it. Yeah, the previous story was that they were sort of making a an appeal and saying, hey, look, we can do it this way and it's not that big a deal. It's just because we should be able to make films and we think this would be reasonable. And the response was no. <laughs> and the response was hell no. Yeah. <laughs> the thing that I like about this response is that they believe that Blu-rays are still unrippable. I believe that they should go on believing that for the good of mankind. <laughs> I have... Incontrovertible proof to the opposite, <laughs> but I can't. I can't show you. He would never do anything like so, that. So <laughs> yeah, the clearly they're not going to play ball, and I they'll probably win. I'd say probably like ninety percent chance they'll get their way. So good luck making documentaries. <laughs> In a shocking turn of events, uh, Gutenberg Project Gutenberg, where you can download all kinds of free and out of copyright texts, is not available in Germany. So this kind is, of ironic. Yeah. This is all. <laughs> 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 this is all about Gutenberg didn't die for this. The uh, you can get free books on Gutenberg, like you say, they're out of copyright. But there's different rules about when things are out of copyright. Before was it pre seventy eight in America? You had to register, and there was some like, weird stuff. Yeah. Pre seventy eight, they're all treated the same. It's X number of years after. In Germany, it's a little bit different. So Gutenberg had some books that were legal in America. 
but not legal in Germany. And they had German translations. So the German government said, this is not okay. And Gutenberg said, yo, we're in America. You can't do anything to us. And it turns out they could. So that's why if you're in Germany, you don't get Project Gutenberg right now. Yeah, they're literally using the same mechanism that they used to block the Pirate Bay to block all of Project Gutenberg. So that slippery slope that we're always bellowing uh, about. And I think this was over like 15 total books, maybe. And how many titles are on Project Gutenberg? Like 100,000 plus? A lot, yeah. Did, a lot. Uh, did the German lawmakers have any moment of like clarity where they're like, wow, we're preventing <laughs> you know, books from being distributed? And, you know, we were we were kind of helping that happen like a hundred however many years ago. More, more than what, well, how about the whole like the not just Gutenberg, but like the Martin Luther German. Yeah. Translation thing. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of history here. <laughs> Hundreds of years. There might be some history that is maybe, you know, maybe some stuff going on here. I don't know. This is this is the perfect lead in. For the nonsense, which you will have to wait until oh, tomorrow. Oh, you're not, you're not allowed to do the <laughs> I'm not allowed to tease, so tease content. This is the official end. Once again, make a note. Mark it on your calendar. The end of part two. This has been security, copyright, and <laughs> hardware and software. If you would like to have help us uh, curate stories for the news... The forum at forumlevel1text.com is a, is a really good place to do that because we can sort of discuss. And I can't promise we're going to read it every week, oh, but you know, there's barely time to read these. <laughs> so that's the end of today's episode. The official end. We're we're wrapping it up. We're going to take a small break. Krista going to go do her get my uh, wiggles out. Yeah, that's what she calls it. <laughs> it's a it's a mental problem that she has. And we're fine. With I it. work with three and four year olds. That's what we call it. So next, well, not tomorrow. But on Friday, will be... Probably Friday. Maybe Thursday. Probably Friday. Oh, who knows? Who knows? We're playing it fast and loose here. We're going to try to do five, six videos a week, one video a day. So Friday, usually we do nonsense in the final version, but we're going to expand it a little bit. This actually is going to be the short one. This was like 30 minutes. So if you're thinking, 30 minutes, I can't live like this. Hey, how about yesterday's episode was, what, 50-some 50 50? minutes? Yeah. Might edit down to right at like 50. Like 45. So tomorrow, the next episode, whether it be tomorrow or Friday, will be... The nonsense, everybody loves the nonsense. Of course, the nonsense is where you get the Barbie dream house, right? But also AI, robots, and crypto will yeah. come up on a Friday episode. It's, it's jam-packed. I would also point out for the bean counters among you, which we know from last week's episodes of the news, all four of them, that uh, the total here has almost doubled. And so... You will get two hours this week. Yeah. Those bean counters have the patrons to thank for that doubling in the total amount of content because they have funded it. So if you're, if you are a patron and a bean counter, thank you. If you are just a bean counter and not a patron, you should thank a patron. But also... <laughs> just the regular viewers too, because we've gotten more viewers. So like all of you, thank you. Well, also, you know, this new format... We would not be doing two hours on the old format. No. So it's a give and a take. <laughs> you have to dance with us on this. It's also a little bit experimental. Kind no of like, one feels comfortable dancing right now, but we'll figure it out. I also want to just shoehorn in the joke that I saw on Reddit, which is... <laughs> Say it. <laughs> well, the, uh, the Tide Pods haven't been a problem, you know, keeping the ladies from eating them, but... Uh, I don't know how we're going to deter gents. And that's where we've come to. <laughs> Stealing jokes from Reddit. Quality content. Is it effective? Will the, will the translation, will the engagement be high? Will there be a lot of engagements and upvotes? I don't know. We'll see you next time to find out. <laughs> see ya. Bye.